One, two, three. People tell me that the residential PV market is booming, but looking at this street, most houses still don't have solar. And that's not just because we're in the outskirts of Manchester, a city famous for its rain. Here in Lisbon, Portugal, the situation is the same. So more sun doesn't necessarily mean more solar panel installations, but check for yourselves. Have a look on Google Maps in your region and drop me a comment to let me know what's happening. These empty roofs represent a tremendous opportunity, which is why more and more electricians are venturing into the residential PV installation market. So join me on a journey as we meet a talented group of installers who've conquered the market and built thriving businesses in residential solar panel installation. Curious to hear their secrets? Well, let's go and find out what they've got to say. Stick around because during this video, we'll also reveal a game-changing technology for home energy management. Claudia Mogaolaru, and I'm the business development manager of Romzir the largest residential installer of PV systems in Romania. I'm Jonathan Delft. I'm the operational director of MR Solar Belgium. We are active mainly on the residential and commercial market. Nigo Strikis, CEO of Strikis Energy, located and operated in Cyprus with PV systems since 2005. Dantal Bogdan, I'm from Romania, I represent Ion Romania, product manager for the B2C PV systems solutions. Well, thank you first everyone for, for joining me. It's, I know it's a real stretch for everyone to get the hot and sunny Portugal. I'll start a little bit about the solar market first. It's been through a bit of a roller coaster over the last sort of decade, but now appears to be booming again. W would you say that's sort of true in your market? The energy crisis. Uh, started the uh, appetite for our customer to buy to to implement this type of uh, solutions in Cyprus. We have a tradition about solar. Almost all houses have solar thermal, so it was easy to change to solar energy. Because of the rise of the uh, price of energy, we saw a boom in the demand uh, from the customers. If we look at numbers, we are talking about 80,000 prosumers in Romania at the moment. We are waiting for the number to double this year. It's really getting common to in install uh, solar on your roof. It's like, like before when you build a new house, you install a uh, a boiler. Today it's obvious to install uh, solar panels. Almost every new uh, house that is being built. So when energy prices were high, customers were themselves thinking yeah. solar. Energy prices fall, the government brings back incentives. In my opinion, the subsidies have a double effect. Okay, they do finance a number of uh, systems, but they also educate the people uh, so you can install uh, using your own financing or the bank financing because you see in your neighbor's house that it's a good investment and they are promoting them on the market very well. The people get to be familiar with the technology. It's getting more and more desirable. I think that is the most important aspect of government subsidies. In Belgium, you get punished. Uh, there's some sort of, sort of uh, system at points. You have to have a, a certain of energy level in your, in, your, in your new building, in your new house. And if you don't reach it, you get punished. You don't get incentives. For us, it's mandatory. After 2017, if you want to get built in license, you need to have a certain amount of in Belgium, they decided yesterday to quit the incentives. Okay. How did the incentive work? Belgium, it was only 750 euros this year. Last year was 1,500 euros. And for 2024, they're quitting the, the incentive completely. Has that affected business? It's going to affect the business, yeah. Well, I think the customers are getting more and more educated. Sometimes they do know a lot of things about the PV systems. Some of them are wrong. The fact that they do have because they get it from, I don't know, Facebook groups and some other uh, places where not everybody seems to be a specialist, but they do not know uh, the exact phenomena that appears. So uh, customers do choose wise, wiser now. They are more and more educated, which is a very good thing for each market. It drives all installers to do things better. What we see a lot is, is now, especially on the module side, people are, are, uh, are blind for, for quality, I think, sometimes. They see warranties from, from 20 to 30 years, really crazy. I think it's, 
it's really unrealistic uh, to buy a product with a warranty with a warranty of, of 25 or 30 years. The domestic market people often choose for for the products who has the, have the highest warranty, mm -hmm. although the warranty is not not that reliable. I think. As more and more solar installations go in, we see more problems with the might be fires on roofs and people getting concerned about batteries. Is this something customers are aware of? Or is this, is this something they're still learning? From our perspective, we are, we are investing in quality materials, quality people to assure to our customers that they are safe to use, the PV system is safe to use. And because we have a reputation that we have to keep everything uh, which is best for our customer, we will do this as well. Yeah, so you're not taking any risks. No, no yeah. risk necessary. No risk as well. <laughs> yeah, and you're monitoring it anyway, so that's that's good. Yeah. Anyway, there's been just a few cases in Romania, and but most of them it's from do-it-yourself uh, kind of projects. We don't see that with professional installers, but with the rather newcomers on the market that they don't pay the same attention to quality or with people that don't have the necessary qualifications to install the PV panels in the first place. Especially in the Dutch market insurances, they're inventing new rules. I think it's called Scope 12. It's some sort of check they do on new installations to see if it's built in a good way, on a safe way. It's really an issue because they had a lot of roof fires. Huawei has on, on, the, on the bigger uh, inverters, they have the, uh, the architecture, so that's really a good thing also. As the number of solar installations continues to rise, ensuring safety becomes an increasingly important concern. Huawei has recently collaborated with TUV to publish a joint paper on optimizer safety, delving into the implementation of their safety protocol. And they've also passed the arc fault detection or AI FCI test and RSD test by CNBOP in Poland as well as the TNO in the Netherlands. You can find a link to the paper in the video description. Because we have more than 8,000 installations for residential, because of the solution that Huawei is offering, the Fusion Solar Monitoring uh, System, we monitor all these installations and we see if any of them falls under the predicted energy production or if there's any trouble, any alarms, then we send a team in to go and check. We don't do it based on a contract, but we offer this for free for all our customers to monitor constantly for the next 10, 20 years. We do that even for installations we've done in 2007, we still monitor them. <laughs> yeah, so you're phoning the customer and say, hey, there might be a problem on the roof. Yeah, yeah, somebody is coming to check it up. For free? Actually, we do it for free. The fact that the team is going there is for free because we do have like 1,000 installations per month everywhere in Romania. So one of our team is going to be close to any location. Uh, so it's not a lot of their time to go and effort to go for yeah. half an hour detour to check an installation that has an alarm. The majority is happy with it because they don't give lots of feedback because it's a good system so we don't hear them anymore. If we hear them that's because they're a problem but it's really really rare. Yeah. Got the uh, optimizers as well. Are you fitting them as standard? As what we are trying to do because in Cyprus we had a huge demand of solar age. So what we are trying to do is to exchange this demand with Huawei optimizer. The demand is there, they want optimizer, they want higher uh, production, they want stability after many years. So we introduce them Huawei inverter and the good with the Huawei inverter is that it's not necessary to stop everywhere. Something that it was not the case with solar. We use them, but only on shaded modules. Exactly, yeah. 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 Okay. It's not standard. It's not required to be. You use them only if it's a shaded or partially shaded. Yes, yeah. right. Or complex roof geometry. Yeah, or mixed type of modules, an old system and a new system. Ah, right. and okay. Yeah. okay, so is that where the customer said, I want more solar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Add some modules, but they're, they're, they're newer models, so don't be fit uh, the optimizers. Right, okay. Batteries are going to be in the picture for the next years as well. Yeah, but you've fitted a lot of the Huawei inverters that we've seen here, so you've essentially you've future-proofed the installations that you have out there. Yeah, so. for sure, because all the residential inverters we have installed are hybrid, so we can add later on uh, the energy storage solution. Uh, one, two make battery storage and they plan a scheme that they will cover all these battery costs and how they will work, but nothing yet. We've noticed some, some new companies are rising, developing systems to, to manage the selling the, 
the buying at the correct times to optimize the batteries so, so the customer doesn't have to do anything. That's the way to do it, especially for the domestic market. We've noticed, especially in Belgium, also we as a company are, are, are testing some systems now to manage the buying, the trade to trade energy without the customer having to care uh, or thinking about it. At the end of the month, he's going to see uh, it worked well. I get that, that return, I, I save that, that kind of money. The problem in Cyprus is that it's an isolated grid. So in an isolated grid, you cannot pull it up with PV. Who will produce energy when there will not be any sun? And battery storage, do you think that will play? Storage, it will come, inevitable. Just we are waiting how we install them, in which system and which direction we follow. Soon behind solar, we start seeing EV. Is this something you're starting to see? Yes, it's more and more, more common to see that our customers are requesting EV chargers. I think now in Romania we have 35,000 electric cars in our park. It's the logical next step when you drive an EV and you can make your own energy at home. It's, it's... This is the first time we've seen it, a Huawei EV charger. Is that something you're adding? Is this new? For us, it's, uh, we know about uh, this EV charger type. Currently, we are using another type. We are trying to integrate this uh, EV charger in our portfolio. What advice would you offer based on your experience to electricians who want to get into the solar market? I, I work a lot with this, so I have the experience. And what I say to them, you need to install once. If they call you back for any reason, you, don't, you cannot go. So you need reliable products. It's maybe the best advice. Uh -huh. Choose a uh, reliable product, and Huawei is, is a, one of the most reliable products on the market now. I think yeah. definitely yeah. the battery systems is really. Uh, we've tested some several several other uh, brands, and we really noticed that uh, Huawei is the uh, most reliable one. Yeah. I think you should train uh, all the time. You should have an education, be up to date with how you can better manage all the systems that you are installing, how to do the installation better than last time. We, we uh, have a little testing facility in our uh, building and we try several brands and we, we test them or, or even with some customers, we tell them we, want, we would like to try new products. And that's, that's the best way to do it. Like, like my colleague says, you can go to, to uh, visit factories or, or to uh, the proof of the puddings and the eating. You really have to try them out and then, then you will learn what, what is the, the better product. What can we learn from this interview? Well, installers must future-proof their work to succeed in the short and long term. Today, you might be installing a solar inverter, but as local energy policies evolve, battery storage and EV charging become important. Gas boilers are being phased out and heat pumps are taking their place, so another piece of electrical equipment to manage. These changes are not hypothetical scenarios, they are the realities of the home energy sector across Europe. By installing adaptable systems, you support your customer's energy transition and turbocharge your business potential with a longer-term customer relationship. During our interview, we hinted at a game-changing technology because as home energy management becomes increasingly complex, Huawei Fusion Solar has introduced an energy management assistant, affectionately known as Emma. This remarkable tool analyzes home energy usage patterns and combines them with local weather conditions to automate the battery charging and discharging process, to utilize excess solar or cheaper grid renewables, helping to optimize self-consumption and lower energy costs. Let us know what you think about that, plus anything else that you've learned in this video. And to continue your solar journey, we recommend you check out this video right here.